Hello, dear students. Myself, Dr. Upali, will be talking to you all on introduction to public health dentistry. Since this is your first class in third year, we thought we'll introduce the basic concepts of public health dentistry through this class. Now, you all must be aware that public health dentistry will be dealt in third year as well as in final year. We'll be giving exams in final year. The theory concepts will start from third year onwards. So we have a very dynamic workforce, which is led by our HOD, Dr. Anil Ankola. Followed by him is Dr. Mantesh, who is working as reader. Then it's me, Dr. Upali, working again as a reader. We have Dr. Sagar, working as a lecturer. Dr. Uh, Lakshmi, working as a lecturer. And Dr. Vinuta, who is uh, working as a reader in the Department of Public Health Dentistry. We will be, we'll be teaching you all about practical concepts as well as theoretical concepts of our branch. Now in today's class, we'll be going through the introduction, various changing concepts of uh, public health, which are various tools which are being used in public health, and there are some similarities as well as differences between personal and community health care. Finally, we'll look at conclusion and the references for today's class. Now, what is this dental public health? If you ponder over this question, the answer lies that it is the science and art of preventing and controlling dental disease and promoting dental health through organized community efforts. So here we are trying to focus our efforts on an entire community and not on one individual. So that is the basic concept which separates our specialty from rest other specialties. It is that branch of dentistry or that form of dental practice which serves the community as a patient rather than an individual. Now it is concerned with dental health education of the public with research. So research forms a backbone of our specialty and the application of the research helps us to solve or prevent common oral health problems. Now what are the aims of public health dentistry? First is to create awareness regarding dental health and early diagnosis and prompt treatment of the disease. It also deals with measures to protect the individuals from dental diseases and to keep them in a state of positive dental health. So we are trying to create awareness among masses about various oral problems which occur and the probable cause for them, as well as we also try to give them education on how they can prevent the disease and promote their health. The objectives of public health dentistry are as I mentioned earlier, to create awareness, to analyze the role of dental profession to work with public, motivating public to change their harmful behavior. For example, now we know there are many harmful behaviors which are prevalent in our society. It could be like consuming of tobacco or consuming of alcohol. So we try to educate people about what are the ill effects of these habits and how can they stay away from them or how can they overcome those habits. Conducting group dental care programs through our camps, we try to screen masses and create awareness about dental problems. Program planning for prevention and control of dental diseases. So this comes as a part of policy formation. Now, when we talk about public health, it is essential that we all are aware of certain changing concepts of public health. If we look back at the history of public health, there are four significant stages or changing concepts which we all have witnessed. First is a disease control phase, which started from 1880 till 1920. Next was health promotion phase, which started from 1920 
to 1960. Social engineering phase, we started from 1960 to 1980. And health for all phase from 1981 to 2000. Now going to the details of disease control phase. This was the first phase which started from 1880 to 1920. Now, during the 19th century, this phase aimed at controlling man's physical environment. So, this was a phase where we saw lot of communicable diseases, lot of epidemics taking place. So, to overcome all those, this particular phase was launched, wherein supply of pure drinking water or proper disposal of the waste, these were taken into account. So, all these Though they look very small measures, they made a huge difference to the health of community. And thus, they were able to control most of the communicable diseases. Next was health promotion phase, which started from 1920 to 1960. In this particular phase, it was realized that public health had neglected citizen as an individual. So to the earlier component, health promotion was added. So along with disease control, this particular phase also try to emphasize on health promotion. It could be like mother and child implementation of mother and child health services or school health services. Now there were two great movements which took place during this phase. First is provision of basic health services. So basic health services today, what we see in terms of primary health care, all these were framed in the, in the health promotion phase. Along with this, many community developmental programs were initiated, which tried to promote village development through active participation of the whole community. Then came the third phase, that is social engineering phase. It started from 1960 to 1980. Now, by this time, it was realized that many of the communicable or acute problems were taken care of. But then, there was also an increasing or alarming rise of non-communicable diseases like chronic diseases like cancer, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular problems, etc. So, this is the time when the concept of risk factors came into existence. Earlier it was thought that only because of germs or microbes a disease is caused. But when we encountered these diseases, it was clear that there was no role of any germ or microorganism in non-communicable diseases. That is how the concept of risk factors came into existence. Now this particular phase looked into all those factors which could probably end up in, in causing disease to an individual. So social and behavioral aspects of disease and health were given a new priority in this social engineering phase. Then there was health for all phase, which was from 1981 to 2000. An international conference was held in Almaeta, USSR in 1978, and more than 134 countries participated in this particular conference, they all pledged to see that each and every citizen of their country gets an optimum health. And that is how this particular phase was launched, that is health for all phase. Now, most people of developed countries enjoy easy access to health services and good life expectancy as compared to developing or underdeveloped countries. And that is why to overcome all this, this particular phase, that is health for all, was uh, pledged so that each and every individual attains a level of health that will permit all people to lead socially and economically productive life. Somehow, all the countries were unable to reach this target, that is giving equal health to each and every individual or every citizen of that country. And this particular phase was not achieved by most of the countries. And then came, after 2000, then came Millennium Developmental Goals. Now, this particular 
uh, Millennium Developmental Goals. The goals have been framed by every individual country. However, goals and targets have been given by WHO. Now, how much of the attainment has to be done is to be fixed by their respective countries. Now, here we have eight goals and out of eight, three of them are directly related to health. Similarly, we have around 17 goals, 17 targets and eight out of them are again directly related to health. So, these Millennium Developmental Goals made sure that health remained at the focus of development of a country. So similarly, India also has fixed its developmental goals for the year to be achieved by 2030. Now that was in brief about various changing concepts of public health. Then we'll come at, when we look at tools of dental public health. Now suppose if you have to do drawing, the tools that you use will be probably paper, colors, poster colors, pencil, etc. So similarly, when we have to implement any dental health, dental public health program, we will need certain tools. And what are those tools? There are five tools which we see. First one is an epidemiology. Now, epidemiology is the science which looks into controlling the health-related problems and trying to arrive at some conclusion, trying to identify problems or uh, reasons for those problems. Now, epidemiology is a Greek word. If we split this word, it is epi, demos, and logic. Epi is upon, demos is human and logic is study, a study which is conducted on human beings. So here we are trying to find out what are the common problems which are occurring in people and the probable causes for those problems and how can we prevent them or how can we cure them. So that is about epidemiology. We will be dealing about epidemiology in great depth in the subsequent classes. Coming next is biostatistics. Now, if you split the word biostatistics, there is bio and statistics. Now, statistics means measurement and bio means living beings. Now, any measurement that you do in living beings is known as biostatistics. Now, biostatistics forms the backbone of our research. The data that we get when we conduct the research we need to apply biostatistics and arrive at conclusion or arrive at the finding. So that is a second tool of dental public health. Then we have social sciences as third tool of dental public health. Now social sciences is looking into overall environment of an individual. His cultural aspect, his social values, his caste, his religion, the environment in which he is staying. So all those directly or indirectly play a role on health of an individual. So how are they contributing either to health or to disease will be dealt in social sciences. Then we have principles of administration. Now dental public health is a team effort. And if it has to be successfully carried out, we need to have clear-cut rules and guidelines of administration. So principles of administration will teach us how to manage the resources, how to ma manage the resources in terms of time, money, and manpower. Finally, the fifth tool of dental public health is preventive dentistry. Now this particular branch deals with taking those precautionary steps to see that people don't develop the disease. It is like we are trying to intervene before the disease sets in. We know that there are risk factors present and we are taking some precautions to see that the risk factors do not end up causing disease. So all that will be dealt in preventive dentistry. Now we'll try to see how public health dentistry is different from the routine dental practice that we encounter. 
for example now in a dental clinic the patient comes we do examination but similarly when you go out in the community you will do survey now let me make one thing very clear we have nine branches or uh, nine specialties in dentistry and out of these nine specialties there are eight specialties wherein a patient walks in to the dentist and public health dentistry is the only specialty wherein we go out to the public now that is a basic difference between the other specialties and public health dentistry so same thing applies here so in your clinic a patient comes examination is done whereas in community we do examination of large masses that is known as survey so after examination is done of a patient in a clinic we arrive at diagnosis but in a community at the end of a survey we get some data and we need to do analysis of that data to know what exactly is the problem in a clinic treatment planning is done looking at whatever problems are there and whatever is the diagnosis we plan the treatment accordingly whereas in community we do program planning please remember we are dealing with larger population here and that is why we need to plan a program which will be beneficial to most of the individuals living in the community and that is why it is called as program plan in clinic we do the treatment whereas in community we implement the program or that is called as program operation in clinic after you do the treatment patient pays for the services that he or she has taken whereas in community financing is done it could be financed by public sector or by public and private partnership in clinic we do evaluation post treatment as to we look into the comfort of the patient whether whatever treatment has been rendered has it served the purpose in community we look at the approval whatever program has been implemented whether the community has adopted it or not so in short if we have to differentiate between private dental practice and public health dentistry so in private practice it is the target is the individual patient whereas in public health dentistry it is community or group of individuals collection of information in clinic is done using history taking and oral examination whereas in public health dentistry we do the analysis of the available data as well as data which is obtained through morbidity records some special investigations may be required in clinic for example radiography blood test biopsy exploratory cytology and in public health dentistry it is about epidemiological survey we arrive at diagnosis in private dental clinic we come to a situational analysis of the oral health status that is we come to know the problems of the community as well as the uh, resources which are present the utilization of the resources by the public remedial measures for an individual or in a dental clinic it is treatment plan based on diagnosis patient attitude and affordability in public health dentistry it is action plan based on demands available resources and priority in clinics the major emphasis is laid on curative and restorative care whereas in public health dentistry it is promotion as well as prevention of health and preventive care so essential requirements for success in a dental clinic is patient consent and cooperation whereas in public health dentistry it is community participation that means all people should be part of the program that we have implemented and they should be ready to accept the program which has been given the service provider in dental clinic usually either is a dentist or his team that is auxiliary whereas in public health dentistry there is a team 
which uses dental professional para professional community volunteer so all together a team works in public health dentistry in dental clinic appropriate dental procedure is the intervention that is done whereas in community dental services it is promotive and preventive measures which are targeted at individual and community level so the supportive disciplines which are required in a dental clinic is psychology psychology of a patient to take the treatment and when we look at community dentistry or public health dentistry it is sociology social psychology education epidemiology and biotech so all this together help as supporting disciplines for successful uh, implementation of a program and for its successful acceptance now organization and management is not very relevant when it comes to dental clinic private dental clinic to some extent yes some organization is needed but it is very very relevant when we talk of public health dentistry since many people are involved many people are rendering services we are catering to large number of population there has to be a proper organization and management team the perspectives or the results we see in dental clinic is usually immediate but in community outreach programs it is a long term we may have implemented some program today and we may be able to see the benefits probably after a year or after two years so it is a long term perspective evaluation and results in dental clinic is relief of symptoms and restoration of the function whereas in uh, public health dentistry it is formal program evaluation that is whether whatever was the said problem has it been addressed the program has been has it been implemented properly has it been accepted by the community and has the program really helped to solve the problems which are present in the community so all these are being evaluated in public health dentistry so after care in dental clinic usually is recall and further setting whereas in uh, uh, public health dentistry it is continuing care and self care that is we advise patients on how they should be taking care of their oral health funding usually is done by the patient in a private practice in public health dentistry it is generally done by government agencies ngos or local authorities so these were the differences between private dental practitioner and public health dentist so to conclude when we look at public health dentistry it is essential to remember that we are dealing with large population we are going out to the public and trying to find out what are the problems trying to see what are the probable risk factors for those problems and how can we treat them or prevent them so this forms the basis of public health dentistry i hope the basic concepts are clear with all of you for further reading i would suggest shoban peter that is textbook of preventive and community dentistry and k park textbook of preventive and social medicine now these two books are extremely important i would like i would request you all to please purchase this book and go through that thank you all for your patience here